What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech and today we're going to be continuing on with the Beginner's Guide to Proxmox series and today we're actually going to be working on doing a fresh install of Proxmox. So I got a new PC to do all this on. I got a HP small form factor. So it's a it's actually a small form factor PC not just a mini PC so it is a substantially bigger than what I usually work with but the PC that I was able to find on eBay had an i7 it came with 32 gigs of memory and it also came with a i think it was like a 250 gig nvme drive it had room for two nvme drives as well as three three and a half i think it was so this pc was a really good chassis for what i figured to work on so that's what we're going to be building out today so just a quick look at what we're working with So this is the PC that we're going to be working with. I'm going to cable this up so we can start doing the Proxmox install and then we're going to get right into the install. So let's go right into that. So before we can actually install Proxmox, the first thing we're going to need to do is come over to Proxmox.com where it comes to downloads. I'm going to click virtual environment. We're going to do ISO and we're going to grab the latest version of the ISO. So you can see it was last updated April 9th, 2025. So I'm just going to download this really quick and it's only about a gig and a half. So it's pretty fast. I'm going to download this. I'm going to put it in my ISOs folder. You're going to use something like Bolina Etcher to write it to the disk, or you're going to use something like iVentoy to put it on that USB so it's actually bootable and you can boot and install it. So for the actual install of the OS, I'm going to be using iVentoy. So it's just a USB bootable tool that you can load ISOs onto, and then you can install them right from the tool. I'm going to be using that in combination with Pi KVM. So I have a KVM access to the machine. I don't have to hook it up to a monitor and keyboard and all that for the install. So I'm going to get that in and then we're going to start up with the install. So you can see in here we're in the Pi KVM and now I'm loaded into the Ventoy screen and I can come over here and I can select the Proxmox 8.4 ISO and now I'm going to come over here and boot into normal mode. So I'm just going to click enter again and you can see now we're over here at the Proxmox install beginning and I'm going to use the terminal UI because it's going to work a lot better with my KVM. It's going to be very similar to the graphical one. It, it still goes through all the same options and it, it pretty much is very similar. It just displays it a little differently. So I'm going to use terminal UI just for this. Over here, we're just going to get our EULA. So I'm just going to click I agree. And now over here is we're going to get to where we want to actually install Proxmox. So if you come into here, it's going to show you whatever drives it's seeing. So it sees the NVMe drive, which for me, which is a Toshiba. I have another ssd in here that i put in so i could use it later on and then there's my usb drive i want my toshiba to be the os drive so i'm going to click that and then here if you need to change anything like you want to split it or you want to use a different file type you could do that in here and do that but i'm i'm just going to leave a default because that's all i need so i'm just going to click ok and now we're going to go to next over here we're going to set our country so i'm just going to come down to united states i'm just going to select that and now over here we're going to select our time zone and one more time, I'm going to change my keyboard layout to US English. Now, like I said, this is a little bit different than the graphical install, but all the options are the same. It's not like it's a different version of it. It just looks a little different. I'm going to come over to next. Now we're going to set our root password. It's really important to remember this password because this is how you're going to sign into your Proxmox every time. After you get your passwords typed in, you're going to need to put an email in. It doesn't go anywhere. I've never had it be used, but they asked for one, so I'm just going to put that in. And then we're going to click next again. Now over here is where we're going to set a host name. So it does use NFQDN, so you do need to make sure that it's not going to actually resolve to something. So if you have an internal domain that you use or you just want to use whatever. So I'm going to use biglab.home. And then over here we can set an IP address if we want. So I'm just going to check for an IP that I could use and then I'm going to set this in. Okay, so for me 50.4 isn't being used. I use a slash 24 so that's why I have a slash 24 in there. My gateway is just whatever the IP is of your router. So for me it's just 50.1 and my DNS is the same thing because I run DNS off of my router. Should I come over here and click next again? We're going to double check that everything make, looks good. And then other than that we can check off if we don't want to automatically reboot. I do. And we're just going to click install. So now the install process is going to start. It's going to take a couple minutes. And as long as everything goes successful, as long as everything goes good, it should say it's successful. It'll reboot and then it'll load right into Proxmox. The only thing you might need to do is change your BIOS to make sure it actually boots from that drive that you installed Proxmox on. If not, it should be all good. And then we can move on with the Proxmox setup.
I removed the USB and if you caught it really quick, it is loading into Proxmox. So we should be good in about a minute. It should pop up with like a login screen and our IP info. And then we could log into our web console. So now over here we can see we're at our login screen and it's given us our site to go to. So we just need to go over to 50.4 colon 8006. I'm just gonna click enter. And then in a second, it should load into our Proxmox screen. And most likely the first time that you go to it, you're gonna get the security warning, which is fine. You could just click advanced. That's just because there's no certificate on the site saying that it's safe. So that's why your browser is gonna flag it. Now to log in, we're gonna use root and it's gonna be whatever the password you set before was. I'm gonna click log in. And now when you first log in, you're gonna be greeted that you don't have a valid subscription. That's okay. We're using the community edition, so it's fine. I'm gonna click okay. And here we are in our Proxmox lab. The first thing we're gonna do is come over here to the top right corner. We're gonna click color theme and we're gonna go Proxmox dark because dark theme is always better than light. So over here is the basics of our Proxmox server. We don't really have anything going on. The one thing's, a couple of things I wanna cover is the initial setup. What I like to do when I first install Proxmox and then we're gonna set up a disk so you can set up VMs or containers. So the first thing we're gonna do is come over to the Proxmox helper scripts. We're going to grab their post install script to make our life a lot easier. So you can help them over right over here to Proxmox and virtualization. And you can see over here, there's Proxmox VE post install. And all this script is doing is just going to clean up a lot of the unneeded stuff. It's going to set the right repository for the updates and pretty much anything else we need. So we're just going to copy that. I'm going to come back over to my Proxmox server. We're going to right click where it says whatever you named yours. Mine is big lab. I'm going to open up a shell and now you can see over here, I get pretty much a, a console line. I'm going to paste in that script and now it's going to ask us if we want to do the post install. So I'm going to click yes. It's going to ask that I want to correct the sources. I'm going to say yes like here. I do want to disable the enterprise repository. I don't want that. I want the no subscription one. So yes, we're going to enable that. This is going to give us the community licensing. We're going to correct Ceph. We're not going to really use it, but we're going to fix it anyway. I don't want the PVE test, so we're not going to add that. We're going to try to have it so it will remove that subscription box that pops up when you log in every time saying that we don't have a subscription. So I'm gonna say yes to that. And then of course it's just saying that we should support their software. So we are. Right now, I don't wanna disable high availability. We might work on this in the future. So I'm gonna leave this how it is. And I do wanna update my Proxmox. So I'm gonna click yes. Now this is gonna go through and it's gonna handle all those options. It's gonna change the repositories. It's gonna do the updates. It's gonna do everything we need. You can see over here, it says patience. So do give it some time because it is running updates, especially after the first time Proxmox is installed. This ISO is a couple months old. So there has been some updates since then. So it may take a little bit of time. So just be patient and give it a second. Now, after a few minutes, all that's gonna be finished up and it's gonna ask you if you wanna reboot your Proxmox server. So I'm gonna click yes, because it is recommended to. Now the server is gonna reboot. So don't be surprised that this console is losing connection. Your web portal over here, that might lose connection too. We're gonna give it a couple minutes and then you, I mean, you could see when your machine comes back online, it'll light back up and then we should be able to get back in here and start working. Another good way to check to see if the machine's coming on, maybe if you're in a different room or something is you can ping. And if you want, you could do a space tac T and it'll keep pinging and it won't stop after the fourth ping. So just another little trick when we're trying to check if systems come back online. So I'm gonna refresh this and now we're back online. So we're all set pretty much, everything's up to date. So if I come over here to updates, it's gonna refresh and you can see nothing's available because it's all set. If I come to repositories, you can see I'm using the no subscription repository, which isn't recommended for production use, but this is okay because we're doing it as a home lab. So everything's all set over here. So that's pretty much the basics of the initial config. You can see we have our system. I have all of my system info. Now, if you're noticing over here, we have some network stuff, which is fine. We have local, which is going to be a drive that we could use. And then we have local LVM. So this is going to be the remainder of the actual OS drive that we installed onto. So it's split it up to use whatever it needed for the OS. So if I come back over here to big lab, you can see that the HD space over here is 67 gigs. That is where the OS is installed. Sometimes you're gonna to need to keep an eye on this because if the machine's been up for a long period of time, this can kind of fill up with some cash or when you do updates and stuff. So you need to reboot every now and then, but this is okay. And like I said, this is local and local LVM. So like we can upload some ISO templates over here. We can set up 
our VM machines to use this. And one more thing I want to show about the initial setup is how to actually set up another drive. So I do have another SSD in this machine that I plan to use. So if I come over here to disks under my actual node, you can see over here I have dev slash SDA and it's a one terabyte disk. So this is actually that other disk that I was talking about. So if I click on it to select it, I'm going to need to wipe it to actually use it in Proxmox. So I'm just going to click wipe disk. It's fine. I don't have any data on it. If you are using a disk that you previously used, make sure that there's nothing important on there before you wipe it. Now what we could do is now we can break out and we can start making some other storage. So I'm just going to use an LVM. It's going to be the easiest one. We have LVM thin. I don't really use these. There's a directory. It's I feel like if you're going to mount a share and then there's ZFS. We might use ZFS later on. I only have one disk and it doesn't really work well with one disk. So we're just going to make an LVM group. If you do want to read more about these, you can click help and it's going to come out here and it will give you the documentation on the different storage types. But again, I'm just going to click LVM. We're going to come up to create volume group. It's going to auto select the disk because it's the only one available that has nothing on it. And then we're going to call it something. So I'm going to call it LVM main. I'm going to check off the add storage. We're going to create. It's going to run. Now here you can see I have another storage that came up. So I have LVM main and it's empty. I have the full terabyte to use. I could install VM disks, containers, whatever I might need on here. So now when I do start making VMs, I can start using this storage to save that data on. This is just a really basic overview of the initial setup of Proxmox. I'm not gonna really go into making VMs or anything yet because then we'd be in a really long video. But this is the basics of getting your lab set up getting the updates going, using the scripts to get the post install stuff done, and making the first disk so you actually have a usable drive to make VMs off of. Of course, this is my setup that I do. This is how, when I set up my servers, this is the process that I go through. Other people might do different things, but this is just what I do for mine. So this is what we're gonna cover today. And right now we have a fully functioning Proxmox server that we can start building anything off of that we want. So like I was saying, this is how we can do a fresh install of Proxmox. This is from the downloading the ISO all the way to having it ready to start building out VMs, containers, and whatever else that you might be doing on this server. In the next video, I'm going to talk about more of building out VMs and containers. Today, we just need to build that basic building block of actually having the Proxmox server and having storage to use with our machines that we're going to be building out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, if you could drop a like and subscribe, it's going to really help the channel out and especially this video. I'm going to have links to Proxmox down below. I'll have a link to my Pi KVM if you're interested in checking out how I built that. I'll have a link to the Discord server as well as all the gear in my home lab if you ever want to check any of it out. I want to thank you all for watching and be sure to stay tuned for this Proxmox series that we're working on. I'm going to work on a whole run of videos covering all the topics that you really need to know to start working with Proxmox. It's going to be more of a beginner oriented thing, but it doesn't mean that if you use Proxmox already, you shouldn't watch these videos because you still may learn something in the process. Again, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.